Hello and welcome to another squeaky chip tutorial and today I'm really excited because I have got quite a few tips, tricks and sort of techniques to show you. So today we're going to be looking at having a go at making beads similar to these. So I'll just bring one up and show you and a lot of you who have seen these on um, social media so on Instagram or Facebook We'll have already sort of had a look at them and I know a lot of people have been asking questions as to how I've made them. Then I've got this one which I've just strung on a little bit of string to make a Christmas decoration with. I know it's February but um, you know it doesn't matter when you make decorations. And then I've got this one where I have popped these sort of bead caps on the end and this would make a really beautiful pendant with the string going through a kind of horizontal pendant or you could incorporate it into a necklace um, so that's that one and then we've got one that's more this shape sort of a gourd shape and then we've got two three sort of quite similar ones um, and then I have got some over here let me just get them where I have added more detail to them so I've got this one here which is just still drying where I've added some um, like little diamonds to them those um, sort of aurora borealis diamonds so there's that one and then I've also got there with me because it's a little bit wet still I've also got this one where again I've added the aurora borealis um, diamonds to the middle part of it so that's just a kind of different look so you can kind of take these in whatever direction you want to go and you'll also notice that on the ends of these they've got bead cores that are sort of star shaped so I'm going to show you how to do those as well so that's what we're going to be making today something similar to this might not be exactly the same but I'm going to start on talk about paper. So, hold on. Okay, so one of the things that I'm really passionate about when making paper beads is using anything and not sort of discounting it because it's maybe not as beautiful or as pretty as you would kind of initially think. So what I had here from Audi, which is a supermarket over here, um, is some really thin... And it is thin. It's really thin paper. These are sort of um, newslettery type promo magazines that they bring out every week. And accidentally, I'm not sure how it happened, somehow seven of them fell into my shopping cart and I brought them home. And this is what I have used to make all of these beads. So they don't look like this because I have changed the paper. I have changed the way that the paper looks. And that's what I mean. Don't be put off what the paper originally looks like because we can change it, we can alter it. And this was free. You know, yes, I had to pick up seven of them, but this was free. So this is what I have used for those beads. Now today, I'm going to use something a little bit different and again, mainly because I had it in the house, I'm going to use this, which is a um, like um, a Mindful Moments magazine. And I have chopped them up into triangles. And the magazine has probably got, I don't know, um, if you hold on one second, I will just get it off of the um, paper cutter. Here we go. This was it. So the magazine has probably got somewhere in the region of 10 to 12 pages with one and two, the front and the back, being a little bit harder than the ones in the middle. But again, these are, you know, this is nice. This is nice. Nice, nice. But again, nothing really much to write home about. But that doesn't matter for today's activity. So what I did... I've popped it through the um, paper cutter and what I have done is I have cut sets, sort of, you know, 
Um, so that's one set. I didn't measure it. I just thought, yep, yeah, that looks about right. I've done that one. I've done some thin ones. There's another one. I couldn't tell you what the sizes are because at the end of the day, that isn't important. What's important is that you've got a variety and then somewhere in there is another set. There's one and that's probably big bits. No, there's small bits. And what matters is, is that you've got a variety of shapes. Um, some bigger ones, smaller ones, just experiment because that's what's going to kind of get you um, making beads that are just a little bit more organic and a bit more free because I'm going to show you how to make these ones with the funky shapes. So what else are you going to need? So as well as the paper, you are going to need some glue. You are going to need a paper bead roller and I'm using a three millimetre roller. You are going to need um, some, well, just to roll the paper beads, that is all you're going to need. Strips, roller, glue. And if you want to find out how I have tarted the beads up, we'll come to all of that at the end. So, without further ado, let's get started making some beads. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my sets of paper beads that I haven't measured, not my paper beads, my paper strips, haven't measured. And I'm going to take my paper bead roller and I'm going to see, does it fit into my paper bead roller? No, it doesn't. I didn't think it would. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide them. So I'm going to have a front and a back for each side. And then I'm just going to divide them out so I will end up with two pieces. So these might be quite nice. to make two identical beads there we go and at the end of the day one piece of paper doesn't matter remember these are organic beads they're just going to grow as we make them so that's one set so I'll take this set and I probably am going to leave the slightly prettier side on the outside it doesn't matter I'm not fussed because it won't look like that by the time I've finished with it so you just need to make sure that all of your ends are at the beginning and make sure all of your strands are together now do be careful you don't get paper cuts and i've done it before when you're holding these and you're rolling them through you can easily get paper cuts so just be careful so with your paper bead roller i'm going to pop it in and i'm going to roll and for this i'm looking to roll something like a bicone bead but i'm not fussed because I'm going to change the shape of that once I have rolled it. Now this is thicker paper than what I used on the other beads. So these beads probably are going to be bigger than the other ones I've done. But that's not a problem because I'm looking to increase my range of Christmas decorations. So you can see we've got to the end. I need to apply some glue. And I love these needle nose um, glue applicators it makes it so much easier so you can see i've popped some glue on there and i've probably popped too much on there but what i like to do is use my thumb and the glue that collects behind my thumb i just keep going round because what you find is when you do cut paper you quite often have like little fibers sticking up so i might take it around the rest of the bead and it just helps to glue everything down nice and flat so there we go, there's our bead, but before that glue dries, what I'm going to do is I'm going to squish it down. Okay, there we go. So I've turned it into a cone-shaped bead. And that's a nice little trick for you, that if you're not really very good at uh, rolling a cone-shaped bead straight off, just do a body cone, put it on a flat surface and squash it down. So I'm going to put that bead to one side for now, and I'm going to roll exactly the same bead but with the other sets or the other set of paper. So again, holding it at the beginning, making sure my strips are all running together and I'm not fussed. You know, that side's a bit bigger than that side. For this, I'm not fussed. This is a great one to do in front of the telly. I wasn't feeling that well last weekend and that's what I did. I chopped up a load of paper and I just sat there and I experimented, hence the fact that everything 
is in like a little plastic tray. Um, and again, I hate throwing things away. I can't even tell you what came in that. I think it was some like garlic bread or something. I mean, what a waste of paper for this tray. This tray here, what a waste of paper, uh, not paper, plastic. So, well, I'm recycling that and I'm giving it another life. So again, I'm gonna take my glue round until it kind of feels like there's no more glue. There we go, another bead. Carefully take it off. If you find that it doesn't quite come off, just get a little wriggle. There we go, pop it down. And now we've got two beads that are cone shaped beads. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take another size. And it doesn't really matter what size you go for. It's entirely up to you. I might go for this size. Do I want to go for this size? Yeah, why not? Okay, so again, I don't want that many. And you can just choose. I think I'm going to go for that many, which is a big, thick one. And then one, two, three, four, five, six of the other ones. This is a no hassle, see what happens, no measuring, not worrying too much about it all being beautiful and precise. Okay, so I'm just going to roll this. And this one I probably am going to make a nice bicone shaped bead. And again, just roll, you can always fix it a little bit at the end, especially with these slightly bigger chunky beads, it's easier. Got to the bit where I need my lights just about to fall off. Stay. I need to put my glue on, have a little bit on each of them, make sure I've got plenty. Take it round. There we go by comb bead and what you can do is you can just rearrange the edges as you wish okay so what I've got now is I've got three beads so we can do several things with these so this is where it gets a little bit exciting so one of the things that you can do is you can take a pencil like so and this is one of those things that if you are used to quilling you might know this from quilling where you are making other shapes so what you can do is put your pencil in here and start to push and you have to be quite gentle because you don't want to push too hard so just gentle just push and I will probably leave it there and I will do this one If you feel like you, what you don't want to do is go too far, let's have a look. Yep, I'm happy with that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this shape and we're going to see how these fit. We're going to see whether they fit on okay. Because this is going to be our centre bead. Does this fit okay? Yep, quite happy with that. So what the first thing we'll do is, is we'll have a light mouth function where it's deciding it's going to go for a little trip. Mm, let me just sort the light out. My light fixed and I am back. So what you need to do now, you've got your beads and you've got your shape, is we need to put a little bit of glue on the inside of these just to help keep them um, nice and firm and sturdy. And that's where these needle nose bottle um, applicators come in really handy. So I'm just going to wipe it round. Um, I am not a huge fan of using a paintbrush for glue because I just think it ruins your paintbrush and as much as you would like to get it all off, I just don't think it ever properly all comes off. Um, especially if you're not quick at getting it off. You know, you're busy making beads. You know, every time you put the paintbrush down, it's going to dry a little bit. So I will use anything but a paintbrush to do my gluing, which is where these are really handy. So I've glued the inside. What I then need to do is pick up my bead and I'm going to start and glue around the edges. And I will probably put more glue on than is needed because you really want these to bond together. It's like you're making something with clay with two parts. If you don't put something substantial in between, it is going to just fall apart. And what I like to do is I like to kind of twist it on. Does that make sense? So sort of twist it on. And hopefully the layers of the beads will kind of go together 
in almost you're like sort of screwing the two sides on so that's that one and then put some more glue on this side and you could leave it there if you wanted if you wanted to just have one of them which is what this one is and or you know you could change the size of that make it bigger um you can do but i'm going to stick two on actually i'm going to put more glue on than that it's always good to be reflective and think about what you're doing and again i'm going to sort of screw the bead on and use the bead to work with the other side there we go and there you go there is our or the beginnings of something similar to this but much bigger okay so you can have a little experiment so that's basically all we are doing all we're doing in order to make these beads so if you have a look at this one you can see that I have used a tiny bead in the middle and I've used bigger beads at the side I think what I made here was a bicone bead I pushed this bead out which made a little pocket in there for the bicone bead to pop into for each side so you've got that shape bead you've got that one that one's obviously a lot bigger um, you've got that one where I've literally stuck the two sides of this together and not put a third bead in the middle there's this one where it is just two beads this one where it's two beads and this one where it's three beads so you've got lots of options and it's just about having fun now you honestly do not need to measure your paper you just need a variety of paper you know you kind of need sets of paper okay so for the next video i'm going to show you how to decorate these beads so that they look a little bit different so you can customize how your beads look like and hopefully by the time i start that bead that video these will have dried so you need to make sure everything is properly dried otherwise it will just fall apart so leave it to dry and i'll be back for the second video